Have you ever wondered why the year is 2023, not 6,739 or perhaps 5,093? What's the story behind our dating conventions? The measurement of time has always held a vital role in human civilization. Each society, in its unique way, has sought to understand and record our journey through the ages. From the ancient lunar and solar calendars to the digital clocks of today, every system tells a story. Get ready to embark on a journey through time to learn about the evolution of our dating systems. Our journey begins thousands of years ago when early civilizations looked up to the skies to measure time. When the concept of time was still in its infancy, these ancient societies relied heavily on the rhythmic patterns of celestial bodies. The sun's daily journey across the sky, the waxing and waning of the moon, and the shifting constellations served as the world's earliest clocks and calendars. Our first stop is ancient Mesopotamia, where the Sumerians developed one of the world's first lunar calendars around 5,000 years ago. They noted the recurring cycle of the moon's phases, approximately every 29 and a half days, and used this as a basis for their month. However, a purely lunar calendar fell short because it didn't align well with the solar year, which is about 365 days. Meanwhile, in ancient Egypt, the year was divided into three seasons based on the cycles of the River Nile, but their true innovation was the introduction of a solar calendar. With a keen eye on the heliacal rising of the star Sirius, the Egyptians devised a calendar of 365 days, composed of 12 months each with 30 days, and an additional 5-day period at the end of the year. This was one of the first attempts at reconciling the lunar month with the solar year. The Mayans, on the other hand, developed a complex system incorporating both solar and lunar cycles. Their calendar round combined a 260-day ritual calendar with a 365-day solar calendar. The two would align every 52 years, an event of great significance and celebration. These early calendars, while imperfect, were instrumental in shaping human civilization. They allowed for the prediction of seasonal changes, which was critical for agriculture. They also helped in planning religious festivals and other significant events. And while these systems varied greatly from one civilization to another, they all shared a common purpose. To bring some order to the natural world, to quantify the passage of days, months, and years. These early calendars paved the way for more precise dating systems which would come into play as civilizations advanced. Fast forward to ancient Rome where Julius Caesar introduced a calendar that would shape our modern dating system. The Julian calendar, named after its founder Julius Caesar, was implemented in 45 BCE. It was a significant improvement over the Roman calendar, which was a lunar system that often fell out of sync with the seasons. The Julian calendar introduced a solar year of 365 and a quarter days, divided into 12 months. To account for the quarter day, every fourth year was made a leap year with an extra day. However, the Julian calendar was not perfect. The actual solar year is about 11 minutes less than 365 and a quarter days. Over centuries, these minutes added up. By the 16th century, the calendar was about 10 days off the solar year. Enter Pope Gregory XIII. In 1582, he introduced the Gregorian calendar, which we still use today. This calendar adjusted the formula for determining leap years and dropped 10 days to realign the calendar with the solar year. Most of the world gradually adopted this new system, though it took some countries like Russia and Greece until the 20th century to make the switch. Now, let's talk about BC and AD, which stand for Before Christ and Anno Domini, or In the Year of Our Lord. These terms were introduced in the 6th century and were widely used in the Julian and Gregorian calendars. However, in an effort to use a more secular dating system, many scholars and institutions have shifted to using BCE, Before Common Era, and CE, Common Era. This shift acknowledges that the birth of Christ is not universally recognized as a pivotal historical event. The Roman influence on our dating system is undeniable, but there's more to the story. Now let's delve into the realm of science, where dating takes a different form. In the scientific fields of geology, archaeology, and even climatology, we use a completely different dating system, one that might seem a bit peculiar at first glance. We're talking about before present, or BP, and years before present, or YBP. These systems are used to date events, artifacts, and geological formations far older than human civilization. In the BP and YBP dating systems, present doesn't mean today or this year or even this century, instead present is fixed at the year 1950. Why 1950 you might ask? 
Well, it's not because scientists are fond of mid-century modern design, the year 1950 is significant because it marks the beginning of the atomic age, when nuclear testing started to drastically alter the amount of carbon-14 in the atmosphere. This change would skew the results of radiocarbon dating, a key tool in determining the age of ancient organic materials. So, when scientists say something happened 5,000 years BP, they mean 5,000 years before 1950, not 5,000 years before today. And the same goes for YBP. It's a way to ensure that all scientists around the world are on the same page when it comes to dating ancient events. But remember, BP and YBP are not used to date historical events within human civilization. For that, we use BCAD or BCECE. BP and YBP are used for the really old stuff like the last ice age, the extinction of the dinosaurs or the formation of Earth's crust. These dating systems are like a time machine, allowing us to peer back into the distant past, far beyond the limits of human history. They help us understand the ancient world, from the age of the dinosaurs to the time when the first humans walked the Earth. Scientific dating gives us a glimpse into the distant past, but our journey doesn't end here. As we step into the future, how will our dating systems continue to evolve? In the digital age, our dating conventions have already seen significant advancements. Timekeeping itself has become hyper-accurate with atomic clocks that measure time based on the vibrations of atoms. This extreme precision has led to the addition of leap seconds to our calendar to keep our time in sync with the Earth's slightly irregular rotation. As we push the boundaries of technology further, we might see even more sophisticated dating systems. Consider the possibility of digital timestamps becoming a standard. These could provide an exact record of when an event took place, down to the microsecond. This level of detail could revolutionize fields like archaeology, where precise dating can provide valuable context. And what about space exploration? As we venture beyond our home planet, Earth-based calendars lose their relevance. A Martian day, or Sol, for instance, is about 40 minutes longer than an Earth day. If we establish colonies on other planets, we'll need new dating systems to keep track of time in these alien environments. In fact, some scientists are already working on this. They propose an atomic time, a universal timekeeping system based on atomic vibrations that will stay constant, no matter where in the universe you are. But while we look ahead, let's not forget the importance of our dating conventions in understanding our past. They provide a framework to piece together historical events and cultural shifts. They allow us to trace the evolution of civilizations, to understand the rise and fall of empires and to appreciate the progress of human knowledge and technology. So, as we continue to innovate and explore new horizons, our dating systems will undeniably evolve. They will adapt to new technologies, new environments and new discoveries, but their core purpose will remain the same, to help us understand our place in the vast expanse of time. Only time will tell how our dating systems will evolve, but one thing is certain, they're a crucial part of our shared human history. From ancient lunar calendars to the digital age, our journey through time has been quite a ride. We began the mystery of measuring time, where ancient civilizations relied on lunar and solar calendars to mark the passing of days, months, and seasons. The moon's phases and the sun's position served as our first clocks and calendars, guiding agricultural activities, religious ceremonies, and daily routines. The introduction of the Julian and Gregorian calendars brought a more structured approach to timekeeping. We then ventured into the realms of BP and YBP, before present and years before present. These dating conventions, used primarily in geology and archaeology, provide a timeline for historical and prehistorical events, stretching back millions of years. Finally, we arrived at the digital age, where timekeeping has taken on new dimensions. With the advent of the internet and digital technology, our understanding of time has expanded beyond physical calendars and clocks. We now have the ability to measure and record time with incredible precision, opening up new for scientific research and everyday life. Remember, every time you write the date, you're participating in a tradition that spans thousands of years. Thanks for joining us on this journey through time. If you enjoyed this video, don't forget to like, subscribe, and hit the notification bell to keep up with our latest videos. Until next time, keep exploring. Keep